Every time you chat with an AI, generate an image, or ask a smart assistant a question, something huge is happening behind the scenes. Not in your phone, not in your laptop, but in a new kind of facility. A facility designed to manufacture intelligence itself. These are called AI factories, and they are unlike anything humanity has ever built. But before diving into the massive electricity they consume, the billions of liters of water they drink, and the waste they generate, we need to first understand what exactly is an AI factory, and why is it so different from the data centers we've relied on for decades. Traditional data centers quietly powered the internet for decades. Websites, email, video, handled by CPUs, built to process tasks one after another. But AI changed the blueprint. Training modern models needs millions of operations at the same time. That's why AI factories run on GPUs and TPUs, chips built for massive parallel work. The difference shows up in power and cooling. A typical rack in a classic data center draws 3 to 12 kilowatts. In an AI factory, one rack can pull 50 to over 100 kilowatts. Air alone can't keep up. These factories rely on advanced liquid cooling, condensers and high-capacity heat extractors to keep up with the heat generated by the machines. The networking is also different. Instead of simple top-of-rack links, AI clusters wire into high-bandwidth fabrics so thousands of accelerators behave like one computer. It's not just more hardware, it's a different architecture. Now that we know what's different on the inside of an AI factory, how does it actually build intelligence? We'll get there. First, let's look more closely at the pieces that make this possible. Power, cooling, and the accelerator racks that tie it all together. Here's where things get a little bit ugly. In 2022, Global data centers consumed around 460 terawatt hours of electricity. By 2030, that number is expected to more than double to 1000 terawatt hours, more than the entire country of Japan uses today. And artificial intelligence is the main driver. A single query to ChatGPT uses roughly 10 times more energy than a Google search. Imagine if all 9 billion daily searches were AI powered the added demand would equal the entire annual electricity use of Ireland. Some AI campuses now draw between 100 and 1000 megawatts of power each, the same as a medium-sized city. The result? Grid strain, delayed shutdown of coal plants, and in some cases new gas plants built just to feed artificial intelligence. Electricity isn't the only hidden cost. Cooling these factories requires massive amounts of fresh water. Training GPT-3 alone used 700,000 liters, enough to fill several swimming pools. Large AI facilities can consume 1.8 billion gallons a year, as much as a town of 50,000 people. And the footprint goes all the way to the user. For every 20 queries you type into a chatbot, servers effectively consume about half a liter of water for cooling. Also, many of these factories are built in hot, arid regions like Arizona and Texas to take advantage of solar energy. But in those same places, water is already scarce. There's also another major threat, e-waste and carbon effects. Training GPT-3 released around 552 tons of carbon, equal to the yearly emissions of 123 cars. But reported numbers are often misleading. Many companies buy renewable energy credits on paper while still drawing fossil fuel electricity in reality. Some studies found real emissions can be up to 600% higher than reported. Then there's e-waste. AI chips become obsolete in 3 to 5 years. In 2022, the world generated 62 million tons of e-waste with less than a quarter recycled, and data centers are a major contributor. Also, before a single server is switched on, there's mining. 
lithium, cobalt, neodymium, extracted in the global south, leaving behind pollution, destroyed ecosystems and conflicts. These factories will clearly harm our planet's ecosystem, but why are the biggest tech companies racing to build them? Companies like OpenAI and Meta are spending huge amounts of money to build these giant computer centers. Some countries are even making deals with different governments to get the power and parts they need. There must be a bigger reason for all this than just making a better chatbot for us to use. For tech giants, the company that owns the most powerful AI is the one controlling the next platform of computing. A multi-trillion dollar opportunity. This is also why governments have become intensely interested. They see it as a fundamental tool of national power, crucial for economic competitiveness and national security. The same technology that answers your questions can also be used to analyze massive surveillance networks, identifying people and predicting behavior on a citywide scale. Militaries are integrating artificial intelligence to create autonomous weapons, pilot drone swarms, and gain a decisive advantage on the battlefield. We are currently working on a new video that dives deep into this specific topic. So with the future of technology and global power on the line, the drive to build bigger and better AI factories becomes unstoppable. And the output is quite tempting, because yes, they promise breakthroughs in medicine, science and technology, but they also consume resources on a planetary scale. The real challenge is not just to build the best artificial intelligence, but to do so with wisdom, because intelligence without sustainability is no intelligence at all.